Hello all my crafty people. It's time for another project. Um, if you're new here, my name is Stephanie and I upcycle thrifted items, generally thrifted from my local stores here. And we upcycle to more wearable clothes, new wearable clothes, or even accessories. And today we're gonna to be talking about something I see quite often in thrift stores. Um, You'll see sheet sets or mismatch sheet sets. I try to say that so many, you know, seven times. But anyway, you see all kinds of bedding. And one of the things that I think is interesting is you see a lot of pillowcases. Just plain pillowcases. But a lot of times they're so stinking cute. The fabric on them, you know. And this one is Little Bird Houses. And I want to make something for one of my granddaughters. I have two granddaughters and one is too tall for a pillowcase dress or I don't know she might be able to wear that but it, it would be a, maybe a little awkward on her lengthwise and then I have one that's too small for something this long. So that being said I'm going to use the fabric. I'm not going to make the traditional pillowcase dress where you just lop off the top, make a couple of armholes, you know, I can show y'all how to do that too, but I'm going to use the fabric, so we're going to cut it open, and we're going to use that little pattern we used for the romper, um, 8347, I think it's simplicity, and instead of making the little romper, we're going to make the dress, and I think there should be enough fabric here to do that, we're just going to have to be very creative about the way we cut it up and what seams we open up to get the fabric we need. So let's go do that. Um, if you uh, new here and you like this kind of material or you want to try it out, follow along. Let me know what you think and subscribe if you like it. And let's go to the table. Okay, once again, we're going to be using this standard pillowcase. It's not even a king size pillowcase, it's just a standard. It's got these cute little bird houses and birds on it. And I like that it's directional, but because it's directional, it's, you know, and it's all one piece of fabric, there's no seam here. This is going to make it easier for us to, um, to utilize. So we're going to we're going to open it up on the one seam that does exist. It goes down this side and up this side. And when we open that up, we'll be able to, I think, get the fabric we need to do the little dress. If you haven't been here before, uh, just to let you know, I do not cut the patterns in um, that are in the envelope. I simply trace them. That's because Otherwise, when you cut it, you get one size and one size only. If you trace it, you can utilize all the sizes in the package. So I have traced her size. She's a little size one. And this is the dress. And the only two pieces I really need are the dress and the little shoulder piece that goes over her shoulder and, and uh, is gathered with elastic. So I think it's elastic, pretty sure it is. So this is the only two pieces I need. Again, this is 8347 Simplicity. And I'm going to put this over here. I've got the fan on, my ceiling fan on, so it's a little breezy in here. We're going to turn this inside out as soon as I find the end of it. There it is. And all we're concerned about, like I said, is taking out that one seam that rolls around two sides of the pillowcase. Now this is, it's surged, um, but I am not too worried about that. I think I'm just simply going to cut the seam. Usually I'd go through the craziness of opening it with a seam ripper, but honestly there's really no need. I just need to be able to um, utilize the whole piece of fabric. So we're going to take our handy dandy ruler that you can see with the ring light on it. <laughs> this ruler has an edge on it that stops it. It hooks on to the edge of my cutting board or my cutting mat I should say. Makes life a lot easier. 
and I am not worried about where it, this falls on the uh, grid. I just want to make sure I make a pretty straight line. Don't want to lose too much fabric. Want to preserve as much as possible. So we're just going to... I'm just zipping that seam off essentially. So it's being open here. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side where the little tag is. This is a Circo. This is made in. I can't read that. It's tiny. All right. So again, whoop, whoop, whoop. don't let the pattern go. There we go. Put the pattern on top of it. I am going to fold this maybe and see if I can because it's too long to put it on my table properly and get a good cut on it. But if I fold it, I should be able to uh, get a good fold, I mean get a good cut on it without wasting any, or too much fabric. I shouldn't waste too much. Again, handy dandy ruler here. I highly recommend one of these if you don't have one. I have no idea where I bought this. It Honestly, it probably was at the old um, Hancock's fabric. And it's just been a great little ruler because it, like I said, it hooks onto my mat, gives me a good stable line. All right, I think that'll do it. Yeah, take the good old rotary. That should open her up. Oh. That should open her up. Oop, take the tag off. So now I have one large piece of fabric. And it's a it's a good size piece of fabric. So I'm gonna take this and iron it. Once I iron it, then we'll lay out the pattern on it, cut it up, and get to sewing. One more thing before I start ironing. This is the, the large hem that, you know, you insert the pillow from this side. And it's, it's a fair size hem, and I'm going to need some of this fabric. So I am going to open this seam up with a seam ripper, and it should be pretty easy. So I don't think it's going to be a problem. But I will take that open, and that way I can utilize all this before I iron it. Just wanted to let you know. I am going to utilize the hem. Okay, in order to make this, I have folded the fabric in half, which you can barely see it, but this is the fold, the original fold from the side of the pillowcase. So now that I folded it this way, that means all the little houses are facing in the same direction. And I'm going to cut two of these on the fold. In order to do that all at once, I'm going to cut this piece of fabric in half first, and I will still be able to use these two pieces that I cut in half for the little sleeves. I only need two of these. I need two of these, but they need to be on the fold. So, in order to make life easier and cut once, I am going to fold this in half. Like this. Make sure we get somewhat neat. I already checked to make sure that my lines are, are pretty good as far as, um, I mean, that makes it easy with this particular piece of fabric. So, instead of taking scissors to it, I think I'm just, well, yeah, I think I'm just going to cut a thin line with, again, the ruler. I'm just going to cut a really thin line here and that will separate our pieces without too much loss. Alright, and that should be two pieces now. Excellent. Because I want these to face the same way and see as it stands they face opposite ways so we just have to turn this around and now they're all facing the same way 
and we have enough fabric to do our little dress now if it had come up short you know if, if we had come up short and it and it just wasn't quite the full length of the dress just alter it just make it a little shorter it's it's a little girl's dress unless it's just severely different in size it's not going to matter so we're just trying to line these up so I've got two folded edges here We'll make sure that they're well lined up. Awesome. Now we're going to take the dress part and we're going to put it right here and it's 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 just the perfect length. So I mean it's it's there's nothing to spare. It's going to end up right here on the edge, which is fine. That's perfect. Make sure that's lining up right. just a little bit more this way like I said if you cut the dress short a little bit goodness gracious it's not going to matter so again we're going to put it on here and we're going to cut it out first I'm going to pin it down I'm still a traditional pinner but if you like using weights, if that works for you, hey, go for it. I have been thinking about trying it, but I've been pinning for so long, I really can't imagine doing it another way. <laughs> but you should always try something new. So I might have to either get me some weights or make me some. You know I'm probably going to try to make them. All right, so let me pin this down, and then once I'm done with that, I only need two pieces for the um, for the little sleeve. So we finish pinning everything down and I'll cut it out and we will head to the machine. Okay, the first thing I like to do is I like to serge as much of the raw edges as I can so it makes it easier for me to hem because I don't like that double roll hem, narrow hem stuff. It's just not my thing. So I'm going to take the two body pieces, the front and back, they're exactly the same, so no mystery on this one. I'm going to put them right sides together, meet the sides. And I'm going to sew one of the sides. So this is the little side. And I'm going to sew that one. And then I can sew a serge line around the bottom for my hem. That'll just make easy, hemming easier. So I'm going to make sure these are lined up. And we'll do this one first. I can find the foot pedal. I gotta find something to put my pedal on. I have no idea how it just vanishes down behind the machine. Keep your stuff lined up. One side sewn, so that means if you open it, you've got the whole dress there. But now I'm going to go back and I'm going to I'm going to serge the hemline. And again, this is just going to save us from having to do a double rolled hem. We can just um, roll it up and turn it under. I'm not really taking anything off. So once I'm finished with this, then these two little sleeves, 
You see how one side's longer than the other? This is the shorter side. This is the inside of the neck. This is the outside of the sleeve. I'm also going to serge the edge of these two to put the hem on them when I put them, when I attach them to the dress. And then we'll worry about the hem in the neckline. I'll put that on the neck and we'll serge around it again for the hem. It's going to be hopefully a pretty quick project. All right, I'll be back. All right, we've run a serge line down the outside of each of what's considered the sleeve. It's a, kind of just a glorified shoulder strap, but we've run that so we can just turn this under to make the hem for that side. Now we're going to need to make a hem for this side as well, but it will be continued along the neckline because you'll sew all, you sew these together and then that will be a continual line all the way around neckline. And the way I'm going to do the binding on the armholes and sew these on at the same time, I'm not going to be able to go back and do the serge line unless I do it in the round, which can kind of get messy. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and serge the edge, the top edge of each of the sleeves and serge the top edge of the neckline on both sides, front and back. That way, when we put the sleeves on the armhole and I put the binding on all at the same time, we won't have to worry about coming back and serging in the round this whole neckline. So let me go serge the tops. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put our binding on while we're putting the sleeve on. It's in two different steps in the uh, pattern, but why sew it twice? So we'll sew the binding on, then we'll turn it up, turn the collar and the top of the sleeve under, and the only thing we'll have left is the elastic for the top. The bottom, I will hem once I try it on her. All right, just to show you, now both sides of the sleeve are serged, both sides and that will allow us to do a quick hem. And then I also went ahead and serged both the front and back top of the neck, which will be connected to these. So before I do anything else, I need to take the long side of the sleeve, the one that's bowed out longer side, and turn this under and go ahead and do a little simple hem on each side of the sleeve, and then we'll attach it to the dress and I'll show y'all how I do that in just a minute but let me go put this little quick tight hem on here here's the hem very simple just turned over the serge line so now all the edge is hemmed on both of these now we got to place them on our little arm holes and the way we're going to do that got to think about the direction you want to you don't want it to you want it to face away that when it goes up over the little shoulder it's going in the same direction as the front. You can't do it both ways because it is directional but you can at least have the front going the same way. And with this particular pattern the front and the back are exactly the same. So just make sure that the two sleeves are the same. It doesn't really matter which is front which is back on this one. So we're going to take the and this, this one has to go on this side because the long edge is over here. So we're going to take these and we're going to line them up together like this. And I'm just going to pin them. Nothing fancy. We'll do fancy here. And then you will turn it over like this and you will pin it again right sides to right sides here. So it'll look a little like this. Well, it'll look exactly like that. So we're going to pin right sides to right sides here. And we're going to do that with both sleeves. Then I'm going to go get our handy dandy never without bias tape. Boy, they should be sponsoring me. I swear. Um, so I'm going to go get my bias tape so, so you'll see how it'll go over the arm like this. So it'll be, it'll be just right. Um, the bias tape, we're going to take that, I'll show you on this one, 
and we're going to run it about a half inch away or this surge line away from the edge. That's another good thing about having the surge line already there. Surge line away from the edge all the way under the arm and all the way to the other side. That will encase our hem, I mean our seam for under the arm. And then we will fold these over at the top, the surge lines, to make our top hem. But we're just going to put our bias tape, single fold bias tape, all the way around the edge so when we fold it in it will encase the little raw edges of the armholes. So let me pin the other one on. Again, remember, direction, direction, direction. So we want it to be like this. There we go. Huh. Made me think about it. See, it's going the opposite direction from the wrong side, but remember, when you turn it over, then all the little birdhouses will be going in the right direction. And of course, this is only relevant if you have directional fabric, which is not always my favorite to work with, but these things were just stinking cute, the little birdhouses and the birds. That's the only reason I bought the pillowcase. And again, let me go get the bias tape. We're going to run that around the armhole while we're stitching the sleeves down and save ourselves a step. And then once we hem the top, we'll have to run our little casing. Again, I'm going to use bias tape to run a casing for quarter inch elastic all the way around the neckline and over both the sleeves. But in the pattern, it wants you to do it on the top, on the right side of the fabric. I don't really want to do that. I don't have a coordinating bias tape. So I think I'm going to do it from the back and that way it won't show on the front but it will it'll, it's still going to be gathered because we're putting elastic through it. For anyone that hasn't seen me use this before, this is single fold bias tape. It's hard to see with the reflection. Sorry about that. <clears throat> it happens to be white. And what bias tape, single fold bias tape looks like is this. It is folded in on each side so you have this crease and this crease on the other side like that and we're going to use one of these creases this fold line to put it on here and we're going to use that as our stitch line we're going to put it on the outside of our fabric which of course doesn't look like the outside here because this is wrong sides anyway we're going to put it on the outside of our fabric right side that is and we're going to pin it, and I'm just pinning it to the little arms right now, but you're pinning it open on one side, and you're going to stitch down that fold line, and when you're done, then you can take the rest of this bias tape and fold it onto the inside and cover that seam and make a nice um, finished edge. Now we have the bias tape sewn on the right side. You can see it's on the right side of the fabric and we sewed right in that little fold line so I've turned the dress inside out so what this will allow us to do is just fold that bias tape in like this and I cut it short of the hem up here because we're going to fold that over for the hem and it's going to contain all of those raw edges so we'll just tack it down we'll just sew it down all the way around and again, that will contain the raw edges and give us a nice finished edge on the outside of the little armhole. Once we're finished with that, then we'll tackle this hem up at the top that goes all the way around the neckline and the top of the shoulders. And then we'll worry about the elastic. That's gonna be a little trickier. It's gonna be an eyeball situation. But let me go tack all of our bias tape down that's around both the armholes. And I'll shove all these little stray serger lines, everything in there, and it'll be nice and clean. All right, now you can see the top. It's all put together. The armholes are, are lined with bias tape. And we are ready to put the hem in across the neckline and over the shoulders. So we're just going to do exactly like we did on the other side of the sleeve. We're just going to fold down our serge line and stitch over the top of it. Simple hem. 
And once we've done that, then we've got to concern ourselves with putting the uh, casing in all around the neck for the elastic. All right, time to place the casing that's going to go all the way around the neck over the shoulders to make our, or to put our quarter inch elastic in to make it all nice and gathered because at this point this shirt's big enough for me. That says a lot. So what I did instead of going back to the pattern, I'm going to go with the logical way. We want this elastic to run right down the center of this strap. So I'm going to measure this strap. This strap is roughly three inches and a quarter. So three and a quarter inches. Now, that being said, we divide that in two. So we're going to get one and three quarters, or three eighths, sorry, one and three eighths. So one and three eighths, make sure I'm right. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry, five eighths. There we go. One and five eighths. You can see that's pretty much the center of the strap. So we're going to run our bias tape in that line. One, we're going to write it, run it right up against probably one and a half. So we can run it down the center of this. And then we'll do the same thing here. If we're one and a half away from, or one and three, well, one and five eighths, whoo, gosh, I can't stand to do those little itty bitty numbers. One and five eighths away from the edge of the top on the strap, then we need to be one and five eighths from the top on the neck. So we will run the bias tape all the way around one and five eighths inch away from the edge of both the neckline and the uh, top of the strap. I hope that makes sense. I'm essentially, I'm just dividing the strap in half and trying to figure out where to put my bias tape so it runs down the center of the straps and all the way around the neck. So let's go with that. <laughs> Trust me on this, okay? All right, I have all the bias tape put on around the neck and over the, each of the sleeves. And I left this little opening right here where we can put our elastic through. And it's pretty centered all the way across the sleeves and then um, in the same amount of distance from the neckline. I'm gonna go sew this. I'm gonna sew very close to the edge of each side of the bias tape because I'm gonna leave myself plenty of room to pull that elastic. And then after we do that and pull the elastic, all we'll have left to do is the hem. All right, we have <clears throat> all of our elastic on the inside. It goes all around both sides of the neckline and uh, over the shoulders. And this is what it ends up looking like. I'm just gonna put it on my arm, kind of give you an idea. So it's very full at the top. Uh, you could possibly reduce that, I guess maybe by less gathers, but it's, it's kind of the nature of this little pattern. The only thing I've got left to do is hem it. So I'm probably gonna put about an inch and a half hem in it because uh, my granddaughter is like her own ma, she's a little short. <laughs> Hopefully I'll get a picture of her in it for you, but uh, that's really the end of our process. So I will catch y'all on the flip side of our next project.